So what if you're witnessing to a non-believer and they ask you, how did we get the Bible? Where did the Bible come from? Or maybe was the Bible completely made up? At the end of this video, you'll have a strong understanding of how we got the Bible, including the types of paper, instruments, writing surfaces used to record the Bible. You'll be ready. You'll be prepared to answer questions. You'll be better prepared to ask questions, even more importantly. Let's go ahead and dig in. Moses went and told the people all the Lord's words and laws. They responded with one voice, everything the Lord has said we will do. Moses then wrote down everything the Lord had said. He got her. Then he took the book of the covenant and read it to the people. And they responded, we will do everything the Lord has said. We will obey. Moses said to Moses, come up to me on the mountain and stay there. And I will give you the tablets of stone and the law and commandments I have written for their instruction. And that's from Exodus 24, 1 through 12. Then the Lord said to Moses, write this on a scroll as something to be remembered and make sure that Joshua hears it. Exodus 17, 14. King Darius then issued an order and they searched in the archive stored in the treasury at Babylon. A scroll was found in the citadel of Akbatana in the province of Midia. Ezra 6, 2. Go now. Write it on a tablet for them, inscribe it on a scroll, that for the days to come it may be an everlasting witness. Isaiah 38. Take a scroll and write on it all the words I have spoken to you concerning Israel, Judah, and all the other nations from the time I began speaking to you in the reign of Josiah till now. Jeremiah 36 2. And the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me. Luke 4, 17. So this section will familiarize you with the construction and give you a greater appreciation for how it was uh, compiled. So one of the main writing surfaces was papyrus. You probably heard about that. Um, this is the most common writing material. It was available, you know, pretty readily available in biblical times. Um, the papyrus plant grew in the shallow lakes and rivers of Egypt and Syria. Large shipments of papyrus were distributed throughout the Syrian port of Byblos. Scholars surmise that the Greek word uh, for the word book, Byblos, comes from the name of this port. So cool. The English word for paper, of course, comes from the Greek word for papyrus. The Cambridge history of the Bible gives an account of how papyrus was prepared for writing. So they took these reeds from the plant. They were stripped, cut lengthwise into thin, narrow slices before being beaten and pressed together into two layers at the at right angles to one another. And when they dried, this whitish surface was polished smooth with a stone or other implement. And uh, that's how they got paper. So the oldest papyrus fragment known dates to 2,400 years before Christ. Uh, that's the earliest manuscripts were written on papyrus. And it was difficult for any of those really to survive or, you know, it was tough for them, um, except in dry areas such in the sands of Egypt or in the caves, such as the Qumran caves, where the Dead Sea Scrolls were discovered. So that's why these are so important amazing of course parchment is another type of paper is a writing material made from the skins of sheep goats and calves uh, such materials were very durable parchment scrolls have survived from about 1500 years before christ very cool vellum was another form of fine high quality parchment made from the skins of calves kids or lambs vellum was often dyed purple kind of cool um and parchment is an enduring material even including the dye so that some of the vellum manuscripts we have today retain that ancient purple pretty neat the writing on dyed vellum was usually done with gold or silver it makes sense to stand out against the purple right so other uh, materials would include an ostraca this unglazed pottery was popular with the common people the technical name is potsherd ostraca has been found in abundance in egypt and palestine some of um, the manuscripts and writing we have was on stones. Archaeologists have found common stones inscribed with iron pens. They also used clay tablets, of course. We've seen these clay tablets engraved with a sharp instrument and then dried to create a permanent record. Uh, these tablets provided the cheapest and, you know, one of the most readily and durable kinds of writing material. So, so that you understand, because it took me a second to realize that the, um, the clay that they wrote on was, was wet and they carved in it with a sharp instrument and then it dried so they weren't like you know chiseling into it which makes it easier 
kind of glad they didn't have to chisel it. Uh, wax tablets. Um, they use a metal stylist on a piece of flat wood and then cover that with wax. Pretty cool. Um, writing instruments that they use, like there was a chisel, of course, an iron instrument used to engrave the stones. Um, so I guess sometimes they did carve into the dried uh, clay. Metal stylus, a three-sided instrument with a beveled head for writing, was especially used uh, to make incursions into clay in the wax tablets. A pen, a pointed reed, was fashioned from brushes about six to 16 inches long at the end, being cut into a flat chisel shape to enable thick or thin strokes to be made with the broad, narrow sides. The reed pen was um, used from the first earliest millennium to Mesopotamia, where it may have well been adopted. Um, while the idea that a quill pen seems to have come from the Greeks in the third century before Christ. Okay, so the pen was used on vellum parchment and papyrus so kind of similar to the pens we have today or you may have seen them in you know, old uh, movies where they dip the the little pen in the ink so that's what you want to think of when you think of the quill pen um so ink uh the ink the ancient world was usually a compound of charcoal gum and water um and so the better ink came from a gall nut which is a nodule or blister that grows in some trees such as oaks when a wasp stings the tree to lay its larvae on the tree's leaves or twigs the tree's response is to encase that larvae until it forms a gall nut some of our best dyes and inks are derived from this gall nut for more information about that you can see uh, the uh, glossary that I have on my website, but um, forms of ancient books. So there are scrolls, right? We're used to hearing that word. Rolls or scrolls were made by gluing sheets of papyrus together or sewing uh, parchment together with sinews from the muscles of a calf's leg um, and then winding the result of these long strips around a stick. So some rolls reached 144 feet long. The average scroll, however, was only about 20 to 35 feet. Um, the larger of these scrolls, the more difficult it was to handle. So you kind of imagine rolling this thing out on your floor to read. Uh, but the codex or book forms, in order to make the papyrus sheets or more, uh, you know, parchments less bulky, um, they also took to making it easier to locate um, and read specific text. The sheets were assembled in leaf form, kind of like the books we know of today, and then written on both sides. The technology of the codex made copying itself obviously much more efficient because the pages stayed open. It it is possible um, also that this technology hastened the formation of what we call the canon, which is, you know, the books of the Bible that we put together and assembled. Um, what else, guys? Probably uh, the two oldest and most significant uncial manuscripts are the Codex Vaticanus uh, from about um, 325 to 350 years after the death of Christ and the Codex Sinaiticus about AD 340. Several scholars have suggested that these manuscripts may have been made by Eusebius when Constantine commissioned him to produce 50 copies of the scriptures. Very cool. That's a historical fact. And... Um, Let's talk about minuscule writing. Uh, minuscule writing was a cursive script of smaller letters and a running hand created for the production of books around the beginning of the ninth century uh, after the death of Christ. Spaces and vowels, as we talked about, the Greek manuscripts were written without any breaks in between the words, while the Hebrew text also written without breaks between the words was written without vowels also. So no breaks between the words and then Hebrew with no vowels um and sometime between the 6th and 10th century uh after uh, the death of christ when the Masoretic text went ahead and added those uh, both practices seem odd and confusing to most modern readers right we look at that and we think how in the world uh, but to people of that day to the ancients for um, whom greek and hebrew was their native tongue these practices were normal and clearly understood um, the jews did not need to see the vowels written out they just knew what it said as they learned their language they became familiar with how to pronounce and interpret it without the vowels so very very cool video on how we got the bible i'm so glad that you were here to watch this and if you liked it please check out the next video on how to witness to a non-believer using information about the biblical scribes and how they did their thing you are just gonna love it